So on that sort of on the you know the talents of North America. Um, what we have also come across is that there are also quite some let's say regional alliances where um, talented people from let's say the university in Chile in Santiago and the university in Argentina and the private healthcare organizations and laboratories in Brazil are working together. They are doing research on new medicines and then they also grant the patent for that particular project. So in that case there was also and that in the context of this trade agreement they can do this in a very favorable way. Um, we just wanted to mention one um, you know one uh, alliance that we probably all know between countries. Um, you know, quite so, some some demographics, I thought it was quite funny, is that um, if you look at Brazil well, I don't know which one I so yet. <laughs> 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 I have a question, I have a question. You know, if you look at Brazil, Russia, India and China and you take those those four countries together, huh? How many percent of the world's land do they cover together? How much percent of the you know the, the world's land do these three or four countries cover together? Any idea? Sixty. Twenty-five. And then the second question is how many percent of the world's population do live in India, China? Forty. I mean, this, this, these are 2009 figures, so it must be must be close to that. So, you can go to the next page. page. And one thing as well, you know, we got a lot of information from the internet, and I, I, we all know that you also have to verify the information that you get on the internet. So, we did speak with, you know, we did speak with this colleagues in, in Sao Paulo. I did speak with Metronic. I did speak with people who. Uh, who know their business, and we also got some uh, quite some information from uh, from reports from uh, Goldman Sachs, from the investment bank. So we thought it was pretty trustworthy, and um, I thought it was quite good, interesting statements that you know, by the, by the year 2050, at least four countries will have a larger GDP than the, the six wealthiest countries at the moment. So uh, and also, you know, since Brazil is a major market in the brick countries, um, that brings wealth and opportunity into the region as a whole. And so it's not just, I mean, this highlights um, these four countries, but um, you know, we're talking also about regional growth. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of products that St. Jude Medical produces and in, within Latin America, for Latin America. Um, the, uh, the company is headquartered in Minnesota. Um, we have offices within um, the U.S. and Latin America. Um, our, we have a manufacturing facility in Delhi, Florida, um, that manufactures tissue valves uh, for the heart and uh, other facilities. Um, one that's open in Costa Rica and a large facility in Puerto Rico. Uh, so these are uh, facilities that serve the region. Um, we also have sales offices in various countries, and within those offices, there are regulatory affairs officials, which are really important for the medical device industry. So we can get our approvals quickly. All right. Um, these are uh, examples of two heart valves uh, that are manufactured right up the way in Belo Horizonte. Uh, they are not products that, uh, that I work with directly. They're from another division of the company. But I wanted to show them because I wanted to show you something tangible that's being produced uh, in Brazil and that's also being sold for use in Brazil. Um, these products are not only sold in Brazil, but they're sold all over the world from this one facility. Uh, in Brazil. So um, essentially what they are is replacement valves for your heart. So if one of your valves is not functioning properly, then you would get a, a new valve. Um, there are two types of valves that you can get. One is a tissue valve, um, which is made from um, either a pig or a cow. Um, those are the, the animals that, that are used in creating these. Um, mechanical is the other type of valve. And uh, the reason, you know, you might be wondering, well, why would I want 
a tissue valve from a animal, when I could get a mechanical valve, you know, you might have some issues with that, you know, having that implanted in your body. Well, the real reason is that if you if you get a mechanical valve, you need to be on anticoagulants, so your blood is not clot. And that's for the rest of your life, or the, the time that you have this implanted. There's scar tissue that forms around these, these pieces of metal. And so, you know, there are reasons to get mechanical valves, but the one reason that you, you would want to get a tissue valve is you don't have to be on these antibiotics. You're on other drugs, but it's not as, as, as um, much of an impact to your body. So what, what I did want to emphasize about these, in case you're wondering how they're created, they, they do come from different parts of, of a pig. And I'm sorry if you, you know, it's a little too graphic for you, but uh, I work in these industries, so for me it's, it's normal. Um, one thing that you should know, know about this is that these pigs are part of a very large industry um, for pork within Brazil. And the company purchases them as, as byproducts, so they're not killed specifically to make these hard valves. I just wanted to put that green factor in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I actually, I have a lot of colleagues who know a lot more about these valves than I do, but I did want to mention that we do have a localized product, and this is actually an older label, but it shows you that the, the product labels do have to be translated in. Um, maybe you can go to that. Okay, here are some products that don't involve animals, okay? Um, so the ones that, to the right, or to your left, are um, implantable devices, pacemakers and defibrillators, and then also the cord that goes in your heart called the lead. These are all manufactured in, um, among other places, Puerto Rico, and for the Latin American market, they're manufactured there. Um, so these products are also sold and you know localized, and uh, localized meaning Spanish, Portuguese, uh, whatever language um, from that country. Uh, so we, we localize that, and that's what my team, part of my team does. The products over to your right uh, serve those those uh, technologies. So if you're in an implant, you use this programmer, and the doctor uses it. That screen is localized into Spanish. Uh, we also have the help system in Spanish and Portuguese. System at the end. Uh, very cutting edge technology. It has to do with web access for physicians, and eventually it mean updating your device remotely as well. Um, there, there's other technology that goes along with that. Um, so those are also localized screens. Um, clinicians, physicians, they use this technology. Um, so all of this is the main focus I wanted to, to or the main emphasis I wanted to, to make about this is that. Uh, Latin America has not been the main focus of medical device companies as far as localization goes, and I know this firsthand, but it's changing. So um, the big push right now is more Portuguese. We've already had Spanish, but mainly because of the requirements in Spain. Now we're, we're seeing more Portuguese, and it isn't for Portugal, as much as Portugal is a very important market in Europe for a lot of companies. Brazil is the reason that, that we're seeing more requests for Portuguese. Um, so this shows you a, very, a subset. This shows you uh, low and high voltage devices. Low, to, low voltage devices are pacemakers. High voltage are are defibrillators. Um, this shows you how much the market is penetrated. And as far as um, Brazil goes, there there's pretty high credit penetration uh, as far as uh, the the pacemakers go. These are lower cost products. But what, what we're seeing, and what's an indicator in our industry of the maturity of the market, is when you see the low voltage go up, because those are higher priced products. It means either the government will pay for uh, patients to have these devices implanted, or in, in some countries like China, which we see is very low right now, they've got a really small subset of the population that can afford these devices, and the government is not paying for that. Or insurance companies the way that it's structured in the US. 